Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about MR2 spider wiring and this body controller that I made. I like it when my swaps end up feeling just like they should as OEM and the MR2 spider has a couple holdbacks that most people can't just solve with regular wiring so that's where this comes in. So anyways, let me clear this EC65 off the bench and let's get on there and talk about it in deeper detail. Before we get in the meat of this video, some of you guys have been asking about merch, and I've been working on shirts, but that part of the world is on pause right now for what should be obvious reasons. Um, I did get my custom 10 millimeter sockets. They're actually stamped. They've got my logo there, and they even say Frankenstein Motorworks on them. These will actually ship with any order over $100, but they're also available for sale on their own. Uh, unfortunately, my site isn't really set up for shipping small things, so international shipping will be quoted way too high. If you're international and you want to buy one or more of these, just ping me over email. I'll try to get the site fixed in the near future. But for now, back to the video. So, just to catch you guys up, if you haven't done an engine swap in an MR2 Spider, what happens is the stock engine controller uses an antiquated communication protocol called BEAN to talk to the gauge cluster and the climate controls. Specifically, the gauge cluster that it talks to is the oil pressure gauge, the coolant temperature, and the alternator light. So, the far right side of the cluster. So that means, unless you're running the stock ECU, you're going to lose air conditioning, you'll have no oil pressure light, no alternator charging light, and no coolant temperature gauge. On top of that, the stock ECU controls when the power steering pump should be on, and it also controls the cooling fans. The last two can easily be corrected without anything fancy, but you're still going to need to add something to the system to make those work. Combine that with the normal problem that anybody has when they're swapping an engine, they don't have the mating plugs for this, so the two plugs that go from the chassis wiring, you often end up having to cut the connector off and solder straight to those wires, and that ends up being a somewhat brittle connection. What I usually do is this solution. This is the 2GR off the second gen. I'll actually cut the connector right off of the stock ECU, and now you can't see it because it's epoxied in here, but I'll solder some jumpers, and one or two of these will be the chassis connection, and usually you'll have one or two that goes to the engine, and essentially I'm just passing those through, and now you've got a nice non-brittle connection with standard automotive connections, and you can take your harness apart, which is really nice. So what I wanted to do was solve both of those problems with one shot. So this is actually kind of the stock ECU connector, the E2, 3, E4 and E5 connector actually match the stock connector and then this connector has an extra connection in here. This is actually off of the Toyota Supra which for some reason uses the same connector. And what this means is by using the circuit board you get just that. Your E2 and E3 connections straight from the car just go right in here and that makes all your connections, no need to change anything there. And then in my case here this ends up going to the other ECU. This ends up going to the chassis part of the new engine harness and this is going for the drive-by wire as well as the onboard diagnostic port. And then there's a microcontroller on here and a bit of logic to take over all of the beam functionality so this part of your gauge cluster works as well as the air conditioning works. And on top of that, what this has over just maintaining your stock ECU is the stock 1ZZ compressor has a uh, locked rotor sensor and without that locked rotor sensor your air conditioner light is just going to blink and it's not actually going to actuate your air conditioner. So this ends up working with a lot more different air conditioners than just the stock 1ZZ one. And then on top of that when you're controlling the air conditioning you actually need to be able to actuate the low speed fans to be able to cool the evaporator and since I was in there what I did is there's this trace here if you cut this trace it'll actually use the coolant temperature to control the high and low speed fans at the same time. It was very little extra hardware since I needed it for AC anyways, so it can do that functionality. And then of course, since it doesn't matter how good your hardware is if nobody knows how to use it, there's an 18 page document on how to use it and how to debug it if something goes wrong. So let's talk about this thing a little bit more. So the easiest one to do is the 2ARFE and that's because on my site you can buy this, which plugs into here and then it goes straight to the uh, 2ARFE ECU and it also comes with this which you plug in here and that is the drive-by wire sensor and your OBD2 port. So that then just requires there's these 17 wires and these 17 wires that's not just to get your gauge cluster working properly that's 17 wires that you need to connect for your entire swap, your engine to work properly, your air conditioning, your oil pressure light, as well as your alternator light. 17 wires, so it's not quite plug and play, but it's as close as it gets. And then the really nice thing is, the connectors that this goes to end up matching the Scion TC harness, 
So most of these, you're not even crimping or soldering or whatever your choice is. You're actually just unplugging them and plugging them back into a different connector and using them like that. Uh, there's a whole video on that swap and you'll actually be able to see it right up here and also a link in the description. So then let's cover the next one. So the next easiest swap is still using these things, but it's the 2GRFE. And that one, what it is, the 2GRFE still uses this connector, but there's a couple of these wires that need to move, uh, specifically 13 of these that need to move. They're documented. And then the 2GRFE also does not control its own fans, so it tells you right here that you need to cut trace A. Other than that, it's the same 17 wires. And this ends up being a lot easier if you're using the RAV4 harness. That, that would be 2009 and earlier because the pins match on the harness. So it ends up just being unplugged from the stock connector and plug into the spider connector and you're good to go. And then the bulk of this documentation is for more generic applications, including Honda K-Series. So as long as your ECU is OBD2 compatible with CAN, which is really anything that's older than year 2000 or so, and some as early as 1995, but generally pretty much anything in the last 20 years is gonna work with this thing. And this goes over all of the required connections. So, you know, there's about a dozen connections that you absolutely need to do. And then it starts going into, okay, well, here's the power supplies that are available and here's where you pin into them. Um, if you're using drive-by wire, this thing's got a, a nice pass-through from this connector to this connector for six wires. and they're not being used for anything in here, so you can actually do anything you want with them. Um, how to use fans, it's talking about that. Uh, your reverse lights, since that ends up on the engine harness. Um, your charging system, including that alternator light that goes over beam to the gauge cluster. And of course, daytime running lights. Now, daytime running lights is, Daytime running lights is on this BC3 connection. Um, not all markets have this BC3 connection. This in the stock application has daytime running lights and some of the EVAP system. And a lot of the world doesn't have the same EVAP system as the US and some parts of the world don't have daytime running lights. So that part is just omitted. Um, but other than that being omitted, as far as I can tell, the rest of the harness is the same. So this should all be valid. And then of course, if you want it, how to wire OBD2 port and that ends up going on the 17P. Now, if you don't buy these from my website, which you shouldn't if you're just doing a generic one. Um, there's a part number down here, you can get it just online. It's just a couple dollars. What's expensive from Toyota is if you're buying these uh, wire pigtails, but don't do that. The 17P uses the same wires as the E4 and the E5 connection, which is off of your old 1ZZ harness. And we're not using enough wires to fully populate this. So you can just steal some from here and here and put them in here for the positions that you need and you will have enough wires. At the end, it also covers how the AC works. And it covers, there's three status LEDs here. Uh, when you're first debugging your build, it'll tell you, you know, this will tell you when it thinks that the engine is running, which is important for the AC, uh, when it's receiving CAN. So that'll tell you if things are working right there. Um, and if it's not receiving CAN, by the way, you might not have the right termination. And I left a spot on here for both a surface mount as well as a through hole resistor if you want to add it straight to the circuit board instead of putting it in your harness. Essentially, you should put a, an ohm meter between the can high and can low and you should get 60 ohms resistance. You'll either get <clears throat> infinite, in which case you need to put a 60 ohm resistor here, or you'll get 120, in which case you need to put another 120 ohm resistor here, and then you're good to go. And then hopefully this light will start blinking. And it doesn't blink for every message, it just blinks once per second if there's been data in the last two seconds. And then of course there's the bean, which actually has four different blink modes, whether it's, there's no activity, it's receiving, transmitting, or receiving and transmitting. And then there's one last mode that I wanted to talk about. Uh, excuse my notes, this actually, these are updates to the document that are on the latest document. It's the minimal connection configuration. So let's say you've already got a swap made and you're happy with how everything runs. But you know, you want the right side of your gauge cluster to work. Well, there's about a dozen connections here that you need to make. And some of them are optional, especially if you're not using AC. And there's also the fan control and the power steering control, which is optional. 
hook up those wires, and then everything in the car will start working as it should. So now what I want to do for a demo, I want to take this. I've got a stock Toyota MR2 out there, and I'm going to hook it up in the minimal connection configuration. I'm going to disconnect the stock ECU from controlling its fans, as well as the air conditioning and anything on the multiplex bus. The bus is just going to be disconnected from there. So as far as we're concerned, it's like it was an engine swap that didn't have those capabilities on the ECU. So let's head outside. And all right, I've got it hooked up. As you can see, it's the minimal configuration. You can see there's less than a dozen wires hooked up there. But what it does have hooked up is the fan, the air conditioning magnetic clutch, the multiplex bus, uh, power, ground, oil pressure, and alternator light. So let me change your point of view here so you can see a couple things. Okay, what I want you to notice is the oil pressure and the alternator charge light. You can see the oil pressure is on and the charge light is on. And then when we start the car, you'll notice those two will turn off. As they should. And hopefully you guys can see that display. Let's turn the fan on. You can see it's stabilizing on about 60 degrees. And now we can show the air conditioner working. And you can see we're now in the 40s. And it's just going to continue to drop. The other thing I wanted to show, let's say the high-low pressure switch opens up. You can now see the AC light is blinking, indicating an error. And the AC clutch is also off. All right, that's it for the demo out here. And we're back. So the sound level on the fan on low speed ended up being too low to show in video. And the power steering was also equally difficult to show because it's just a bit of noise. So you'll have to take my word on it. Those two things were also working. Something I didn't show out there that I want to take a second to show is the stock ECU case. For mounting purposes, this is designed to go right in that stock ECU case. And then you can just close it up in there. And that takes care of the mounting. And obviously the wiring harness ends up fitting just perfectly where it needs to fit. So again, it's for that close to OEM look. As much as I can, this fits that need. So now the next question, when is the 2AR going to get air conditioning? So let's talk about that. This here is a Nissan Juke compressor, specifically an open one. And this is what I plan on using in that swap. You'll notice it's kind of short. This body here ends up just being a muffler. And this right here is the actual AC pump. Uh, yeah, it's covered in PAG oil. Because of course it is. So the idea is to get a custom casting made that replaces this part, which is the muffler and the, the oil to refrigerant separator. And then this will end up bolting right to the block. I'm probably not going to remake this part of the casting. There's no need to. The mounts end up being on this side of the casting. Uh, it might be necessary to cut this off by hand. And you can do that without getting any junk in the compressor. You just do it while it's still assembled. Just a hacksaw here and here. If that ends up being an issue, I'll probably make something available. We'll see. We'll see as time goes on. But we can thank Nissan on this one for making this ridiculously small air conditioning compressor. So thanks everyone for watching. If you have any questions about the document, feel free to reach out. My email is in the description. It's also, there's also an easy way to contact me right on the website. And we'll see you guys later.